Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name's Frederick Wheeler, and today I'm going to show you how to make a Dungeons & Dragons map in only five minutes. Why would you have to draw a map so quickly? Well, sometimes your players will do things that require you to come up with a location or encounters for your session at the very last minute and you have nothing prepared. So if you're the sort of person who doesn't like to improvise, this is good for you. I want you to call a five minute break, just a very short break, get the players to go have a drink, have something to eat, have a chat while you draw your map. Decide what the location will be. In this case, the players have actually determined what the location will be. You just need the map. It could be a castle, it could be a house, a crypt, an island, it could be on a boat, or it might just be a dungeon. You only need five locations for your map. That's enough for one session. Give the map a title. Is it Castle Ravenloft? Is it the Dungeons of Dread? Label each of your five areas so you know what they are. That'll give you some idea of their purpose. You're going to populate your dungeon. You're going to put monsters in there. Traps, puzzles. You're going to put in any kind of interesting challenge that might be required outside of the box stuff. And if you want to have a non-player character who's going to be able to communicate back and forth with the other player's characters, put that in there. And you need some treasure. Okay, it's time for an example. I'm going to do a tomb. Okay, labeling it. All right, need to populate it now.
Okay, I think that's definitely about five minutes, so I'll explain what I've done. I've got the Tomb of Zod, it's not an original name, but I've picked something. I've got some stairs, I've got my gallery corridor, which will have wall paintings on it. I've put a, uh, a trap over here, there's a plate that will press, if they stand on it, darts will shoot from the walls, so it doesn't matter where they stand in the room. I've got a door. The antechamber, that's where personal property is usually kept from the, for the deceased. So Zod's personal property be in here. It might be a boat, it might be chariots, it might be furniture. Uh, who knows? Any sort of thing that you think would help populate this location. It would be probably quite full too. Over here, I've put two animated talking statues that the players can uh, have their characters talk to or fight to get past these doors to get into the burial chamber. Over here is another door. This is the annex room. It's a very small room. It'll have food, drink and oil, things that are sort of consumables. Uh, they're probably going to be off or gone bad. But there is a puzzle box they can find in that room. And if they figure out the puzzle box, it will open up and they will find a key. And that key will open the secret door if they manage to find the secret door in the burial chamber. Okay. Got one burial chamber, we've got our stone coffin, this is where Zod's mummy will be uh, residing. We've got a blade trap if they try to open it. Um, we're going to have murals or um, wall paintings, probably depicting Zod's life when he was alive. Over here the secret door, you can decide. Secret door is probably going to be something like a, a 20 investigation to find. But, we've got the treasure chamber. I've put a shrine in the treasure chamber. That shrine will have vessels that will hold the organs to the mummy. And I've decided that part of the treasure, will, there will actually be a treasure golem made up of coins and other bits and pieces that will try to fight them. So I'm going to have to fight the treasure golem to actually get the treasure. If you found this video helpful as a dungeon master, please share, like and subscribe. Make a comment below if you would like more videos on maps. And give me a location or a topic and I'll do my best. And till next time. Keep rolling those 20s.